This is the brand new Polar Vantage V3 watch, arguably the biggest shift in technology for Polar as a company since they started introducing GPS into their watches more than a decade ago. In this video, I'm going to take you through everything you need to know about the Polar Vantage V3 from someone who's actually been using it over the last little while. Now, the very first thing to know is the price. It is $599 and it'll start shipping on October 25th. So a couple weeks from now, note that I'll have my full in-depth review released around that time and that'll dive deeply into all the new GPS stuff and all the new heart rate stuff and how well it works day to day from both myself as well as my wife. So if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, then just tap any tap down at the bottom there so you're good to go as soon as that releases. Now with that, let's get straight into the new features. And the very first one is a biggie, which is the new offline mapping. This is the first Polar wearable they've had that has offline mapping where you can actually to see the maps, download the maps to your watch, totally free maps, and then have some contextual awareness around where you are. That includes topographic details as well. So how this works is that by default, the watch will have both North America and Europe basic maps. And there's basically two levels of detail, basic and detailed. The basic version has town names and stuff like that and big road names uh, and some of the bigger bodies of water, but it doesn't have the topographic contour lines, nor does it have a lot of the smaller details like small trail names or uh, small streams, etc. So if you wanna switch from the basic maps that are on the watch by default and go into the detailed maps, you grab your watch, you grab the USB cable, you plug it in your computer, and then you go to Polar's map downloading website. On the left-hand side, you see two toggles, basic and detailed. Uh, from there, you can scroll around the big old earth and then download this section that you want. This is a very simple process. You're basically downloading a single file for that particular region that you want to download the detailed maps for, and then you just drag that file onto your watch. Your watch shows up like a USB thumb drive. The watch has 32 gigs of storage on it, and by default, those base maps uh, take up about half of that for North America and Europe. You can, of course, delete those maps. There's no problem in doing that. Uh, here is a on the screen somewhere right here. I uh, listed just some like random map sizes at the detail level uh, that I've downloaded. Note that the basic levels only offer North America as well as Europe. For the rest of the world, they just assume you want the detail maps. That's probably a safe assumption, to be honest. Just go detail them. I mean, there's plenty of storage on the watch to do that. And as you can see, those map sizes aren't all that big. Now, when it comes to routing, Polar supports routing with Komoot. Uh, so if you create a Komoot route, you can push it to your watch uh, and then go ahead and follow that route there. However, keep in mind that this does require the route we planned ahead of time. Uh, so there is no on-demand routing on this watch. They don't, their polar's not there at this point from a technology standpoint. Uh, instead, all routes have to be planned ahead of time. Likewise, if you go off route, it won't do an automatic recalculation using alternative trails or routes or anything like that. It's just gonna basically say, yo, your trail's over that way, good luck with it. But Polar says this is really just the beginning of their mapping journey, uh, something that I probably would guess would be measured more in years rather than months or weeks. Still, the maps look beautiful. You can also use a pan and zoom function to move around if you want to as well. Uh, so again, a good starting point. And hey, a quick note, if you are finding this video interesting and useful, now's a great time to whack that like button at the bottom or hit subscribe. It really does help with this video and the channel quite a bit. Next, the biggest visual change you're probably immediately noticing is the fact that it has an AMOLED display. A 1.39 inch AMOLED display, which has a peak brightness of 1000 nits. That display is plenty bright. Bright 1000 nits is plenty bright for basically any scenario out there. Sunny beaches, all that kind of stuff. I'm in Hawaii right now at the Ironman World Championships, and this is no problem at all seeing this out in bright, sunny conditions. Uh, you know, years ago there was problems with AMOLED and LCD displays in bright sunny conditions but those years are past. They've been passed for a long time. Now on the flip side in dark conditions that's where an AMOLED display really shines like to throw a dad joke in there uh, because it is so bright and it is so easy to see and that's an area that Polar has had challenges with their myth based displays over the last little long while in fact for that matter uh, just being pretty dim and this is this is not dim this is like on spot it's spotlight bright. Next, they've adopted a new multi-band GPS chipset. Uh, this is not the first watch from Polar to have a dual frequency multi-band GPS chipset. That was a Polar Ignite released, I think, earlier this year or so. Uh, the problem with that watch, though, is that the GPS accuracy on that was uh, it was frankly horrendous uh, for a uh, multi-band. It was, it was really, really bad. Uh, Polar says they've they fixed that uh, on this watch. In particular, they've changed the antenna design on the Polar Vantage V3 uh, to be better, at least according to Polar. Uh, and that's the thing to understand is that a lot of people want to compare GPS chipsets between watches. Virtually every company is using the exact same GPS chipset, whether it be Garmin, Polar, Sunto, they're all using the same thing. Uh, what matters is antenna design. In just a fraction of a millimeter difference in antenna design, combined with differences between the case and bezel materials, as well as the design of those particular cases and bezels, is the difference between incredibly good GPS accuracy and horrendous GPS accuracy. Right now, the firmware on this unit is strongly beta. So uh, I'm gonna save all my GPS accuracy testing for my full in-depth review. That's why this video is not titled review. I don't, I don't title things review and that's it's an actual review. Uh, so 
With that said, the next item is something they've added called Elixir Biosensing Technology, which sounds like something you'd find in Vegas, and, and honestly, it, it kind of is. So the Elixir branding you're going to hear a lot about is basically just an umbrella branding over all of their uh, algorithms and biosensing stuff underneath the covers. It's not like an actual thing that you can stick your finger on. Uh, what is, though, an actual thing is the following three components that make up that. Uh, the first one is the new heart rate sensor, what Polar's calling their Gen 4 optical heart rate sensor. Uh, and with that optical heart rate sensor, it's saying it's more accurate, like every company says, but also has ECG functionality, which I'll talk about in just a second. The next new sensor piece is part of that bundle is the uh, SpO2 sensing, so basically the blood oxygenation level sensing. Uh, that's that red light that you can see there, and you can basically measure that uh, at any point in time you want to and get your blood oxygenation level. Uh, and Polar does have some very specific claims about that and the accuracy of that that they uh, appear to be quite proud of. Uh, so that's something that's good to see that them actually staking claim out there as to what they think their accuracy level is. Uh, and then the third thing is a new skin temperature sensor. Uh, so while you're sleeping at night, it'll automatically measure your skin temperature, uh, and then it'll record that, and it'll trend that over time. So once you've built up initial baseline, it'll show you the difference to that baseline. So it's not going to show your exact skin temperature each night, but rather the deviation from that baseline. Note that typically speaking, we're seeing temperature sensing used for uh, female or women's health cycle tracking, uh, for period prediction and things like that. Polar isn't doing any of that today. They're not opposed to it, but that's just not in the watch today. Instead, it's just simply showing you deviation from that baseline. Now, the next thing is that new ECG function, like I mentioned earlier on. But please listen to this whole section first, because there is a huge gotcha here that you really need to be aware of. So to make this work, you're going to first put the watch on your wrist, if it's not already there. And then you go into the test menu, you're going to see ECG. From there, you're going to take your opposite hand, the one over here, and you're going to put it on the upper left-hand button to complete that circuit. You will immediately start seeing the ECG trace, that little badoop, badoop, badoop thing on the screen right there, and it'll do that for 30 seconds while it records that trace. That's the same as every other company out there. At the end of that, you'll see your heart rate average as well as the HRV values. But if you scroll down below that, you'll see it's not a medical device, and that is the first of the two major differences here. If we look at what uh, Apple and Samsung and Google and Fitbit and Garmin and Withings and plenty of other companies have done, they have gone through the FDA certification or the EU or CE certification to make this a medical grade device. So it's truly an actual medical grade device for ECG functions. Polar has not done that. The second thing they have not done is to do any sort of abnormal rhythm detection. Uh, so what Apple and everyone else does tell you whether or not you have an abnormal rhythm. It'll say, for example, if you have AFib or something like that, and they can do that either manually or sometimes passively behind the scenes continuously 24 by 7. Polar hasn't done that either. And now Polar says they're not opposed to doing any of this stuff, and Polar does have experience with uh, medical grade stuff and other product areas, but for this here today, that is not the case. And I think this is the only thing on this entire watch I've got some problems with, uh, is that for most consumers, when they see the marketing of ECG, they're gonna assume it's gonna do that proper AFib detection, and they're gonna assume it's a medical grade device, because again, it's being marketed very heavily as an ECG function, and neither of those is true here. And so I am gonna nitpick with Polar on that, just like I've nitpicked with other companies that have tried to introduce ECG without certification, or without those features, because I think that is pretty misleading to consumers. And it's certainly Polar can get certification for this device. Keep in mind, though, that's a very long process, uh, really about a year plus process at a minimum, uh, depending on whether or not they've started. Now, switching topics to a fun one, they've added a flashlight. Uh, they've used the display as a flashlight, like a lot of the companies have as well. You can swipe down from the top and then tap the flashlight, and then it flashes while you flash the entire room. Like, it is super bright. I'd actually argue um, a little, not to like look a gift horse in the mouth here, but this is flipping bright. Uh, I would appreciate if Polar could add just a couple levels of brightness like most other companies do, as, as well as like the red light option like most other companies do. But hey, I'm, I'm excited about the flashlight. I am a flashlight kind of guy, and so it's good to see that here. Just uh, I just don't want that much power. Uh, it is a blowtorch. Anyways, looking at things that are not a blowtorch is the battery life times. Uh, here on the screen right now is all the GPS battery times, uh, depending on which mode you're in, of course. Uh, if you go all the way out to the 100 40 hours one, then in that case, you're you know, reducing your GPS tracking rate and the accuracy that traces versus those shorter durations is using the higher accuracy levels of the watch. Likewise, from a standby kind of watch standpoint, like if you just have it on your wrist and not doing sport modes, Polar is saying eight days in a gesture based uh, mode, which means when you raise your wrist up, the screen comes on, you put it down, it turns off. Uh, in always on mode, which is what I've been using, they're saying five days. And I'd say that seems about right thus far. And it's in the ballpark for other companies uh, with this size of watch. Now, one more numbers based stat for you here. Polar says they've increased the processor by 129%, not rounded to 130, 129%, uh, which in turn increases the user interface responsiveness. And kudos to Polar. Every time they've released a product over the last forever, they say it's faster and it feels more responsive, and frankly, it never is. This time, this is legit fast. Like, I can swipe through the menus and it can keep up. 
Good job, Polar. You've nailed responsiveness this time. Uh, it's really good to see. Uh, also notable is that they've now switched to proper 22 millimeter straps. Uh, in the past, you had to have an adapter for the Polar Vantage V series. Now there's no more adapter required, just straight up normal 22 mil straps. You can buy whatever the heck you want on Amazon, stick them on this and you're good to go. They've also switched to a USB-C charging cable, not for the, the port on the back of the watch, but uh, for the part that goes into your computer or whatever else it may be, standard USB-C, which is cool. The part on the back of the watch, companies don't do that because like from a waterproofing standpoint, it's kind of tricky to do, uh, especially down at depth. And speaking of that waterproofing, it is waterproof or water resistant to 50 meters. Uh, likewise, the display on the top is Gorilla Glass 3, uh, and it does have a curve to it at the outer edges, not the, the flat part across the top, but the very last like two, three millimeters is slightly curved. So if you are putting a screen protector on there, keep that in mind. I don't really recommend screen protectors on most watches. They tend to do more harm than good in most cases, but if that's your thing, then just uh, keep that in mind. I'm sure at some point people will have details about that. Uh, speaking of details, again, around October 25th or whenever they start shipping this watch, that's their, their current time frame. I will have my full in-depth review out of this where I'll dive into accuracy testing, uh, GPS, and all the stuff and how it works over a longer period of time. With that, definitely hit the subscribe button at the bottom there today is going to be a bonkers crazy busy day if you're watching us on this day uh, this is not the only product releasing so you're going to get like ding-donged every about two hours or so until sometime tomorrow with that have a good one